happy happy sunday the lord has made us to witness another beautiful sunday we give glory and honor and our adoration unto him alone alone be all the glory honor and adoration as you all know my name is evangelist dr esther ola i um apologize for starting up late today we're a bit later than our usual time i want to um i i just want to let you know that one it was due to one thing or the other but we still have to come together to share the word of god hallelujah today is sunday it's a beautiful day it's a wonderful day i'm so glad that you can see me i can see you 
by the grace of God, we are alive and able to God be all the glory. Father Lord, we commit this program into your hands. Father, have your way, take control. Jehovah God, I decree so that you can increase in me. Let the word come forth from thy throne of grace, mercy, and, uh, and, and love above in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, I pray that the words shall come out and shall fill the lives of people and shall change it positively in Jesus' name, including mine in the name of Jesus. Nobody will leave your presence the same way they have come in Jesus' name. Thank you for this beautiful time. Holy Spirit, take control, charge the atmosphere. Angels of God, begin to do your work and begin to attend to every soul on every platform that are with me. And we share later and we hear this word later in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name, you are all welcome. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. As you join, please share, share, share. As you join, please share, share, share. Thank you. As you join, please share, share, share. I see you, Calvin. As you join, share, share, share. God bless you. As you join, share, share, share. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to talk about the love story. There is no love story without Jesus. Jesus is the center of it all. So that is why I'm, I bring to you this word that says that as you go in into this love week, as you begin to go into the celebration mode, as you switch and gear into the celebration mode this week, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the center of it all. Don't forget that Jesus is the center of it all. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So it is knowing Jesus, knowing God, knowing the love of God that enables you to celebrate Valentine. Because we humans, we have decided that we shall dedicate a particular day for celebration of Valentine's Day, which is February 14th. But I want you to know that God is love and God, he that knows God, he that knows God knows love. And this God is eternal. That means this is love is eternal. It's not just for one day. It's just not for one week. It's not just for a period. It is every day of our lives is supposed to be celebrated every day. That means love is supposed to be celebrated every day. Love has no boundary. It has no beginning and the, and the end because our God is love. So when you are betrothing, when you are singing that love song to your loved ones, remember that Jesus is at the center of it all. And also, I want to show, bring to you today also, that love is not only between the man and the woman. It's not between lovebirds alone. It's not between couples alone. It is universal. It is between the brother and the brother. It is between the brother and the sister. Between the mother and the, and the daughter. Between the mother and the, and the son. Between the father and the son, between the father and the daughter, between brothers, between uncles, between workers, between neighbors. Let us celebrate the love of God the way God wants you to celebrate love. Remember that no one is ostracized, no one is removed, no one is kept, is, is demarcated. There is no demarcation to the love of God. God loves everyone. That is why the Bible says in the book of John 3, 16, that for Christ, God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That is why Christ came. Christ came for you and I to be able to celebrate love. The love that we are celebrating, that we are dedicating one day to, is supposed to be celebrated every day. That is the purpose why God came. He came because of love. Christ came into our lives because of love. He laid down his life because of love. So when you go on to that, your loved one, remember that you are celebrating God in that person's life. You are not only celebrating the, the other love, but you are celebrating the agape love as well. 
So it goes beyond husband and wife love. It goes beyond the fleshy love. It enters into the atmosphere of agape love. Because that is the beginning and the source of love. God did not demarcate anyone. Nobody is out, the out of the bracket. He said, love everybody. Love your fellows. Love your parents. Love your brothers. Love your sister. Love your neighbor. Lo love your enemies. Even your enemies, God wants you to love them. Let me quickly go and take you into the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 10 to 13. To express to you, explain to you expressly the love of God for humanity. How God wants you to carry on love. Love your neighbor, he said. Even that person that the world believes is unlovable. That person that the world rejects. That person that the world, everyone can easily see all the issues of his or her, or her lives. All the reproaches of that person's life, everybody can see it. All the failures, all the, 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 the lack in that person's life, the challenges of that person, the incapabilities of that person, everybody can see it, but God wants you to look beyond it and love that person all the same. That person that the whole world has rejected. Remember that even the world rejected Christ when he came. He came to do good for you and I. He was rejected. So when humans are rejected, ostracized, castigated, remember that is when God wants you to love them more. The celebration of love this week is for you to love them as well. It's for you to love. There is no one. There is no one that you can reject. You cannot reject even people, even the unbelievers. That now, normally Christians will say these are unbelievers. I cannot love them. You have to love them. Because if you don't love them, you cannot do them good. The beginning of the ability to be able to do good to your fellow man is to be able to love them. You cannot do good to your fellow man. You cannot do good to your neighbor. If you don't love them. Because love brings compassion. Love brings some emotions with it. It's, it takes away fear. It takes away ridicule. It takes away demarcation. It takes away that, that segregation. Love takes them all away. It goes above. And you are able to love. You love unconditionally. God wants you to love that your neighbor. That person that has done you wrong. You have to be able to forgive and love. If there are one or two people in your life that you are still holding in, 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 in pain in your heart. Rejecting in your heart. God wants you to think about it today. And accept them. And love them. They can be so unlovable. But love them all the same. Even look at Judas Iscariot. What he did to God. God knew. Right from when he was doing it. Christ still showed him love. He still showed him love. In spite of everything he was doing. Going behind. Maligning. Stealing the money. God. Christ Jesus still showed him love. How much more? What can anybody do to you that you cannot love them back? When God loves you first. If God is to, to, to mark sin. Who can stand? When people were throwing that stone. Against that woman that committed adultery. Jesus Christ said. He who has no sin should throw the first one. Everybody threw down their stones. And walked away. Because everybody have their own. Uh, 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 weaknesses. Have their own shortcomings. Have their own challenges. Have their own one way or the other, where they have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But despite that, Christ still died for us and brought us, reconciled us back to God Almighty. So God does not want you to segregate. He doesn't want you to demarcate. 
wants you to love that unlovable person. Love them. Let me go into the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 10 to um, 10 to 13 or 14. So, Matthew chapter 9, verses 10 to 13. Let's read. He says, And it came to pass as Jesus sat at the meat in the house. Behold, many publicans and sinners, take note of that word, sinners, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eat thou? Why eat your master with publicans and sinners? So these are the Pharisees that think that they are all in all, they know it all, that think that they are the best, they are holy, that think that they are sinless, they are perfect, castigating and criticizing Jesus for sitting with the publicans and the sinners. They are castigating, they are, they are, you know, talking down on Jesus for sitting down with the sinners and the publicans but when jesus verse 12 but when jesus heard that he said unto them they that be whole need not a physician but they that are sick christ is telling them here that it, it did not come from for those that are already that got it all that are perfect that are ever bound he came for the sinners that are yet to know God. He came to redeem human beings back to God. So those of those that are still backward, that are living in sin, that are lost in the world, those that are in, that are perishing, that are living a, 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 a useless life, that are living, that have you know sold their souls away those that are living in that are living in unholy life that have gone astray from the presence of god that have even become a tool even in the presence even in the hands of the of the enemy those that are living recklessly they are using their bodies recklessly the prostitutes, the arm robbers, the kidnappers, the, he came for them all. That is what God is saying, that those are the ones he came for. Those are the ones that are sick. They need a physician. That is why he said, but when Jesus heard that, I'm reading verse 12, he said unto them, that he said, they that behold need not physician. Those that already know this, those that are already born again, those that already know Christ, those that are already in the way of the Lord, they need no physician. It's not that's those are not the ones that he came for or died for because they're they are already knowing the way. They're already in the path of God, they know God. But he said, they but they that are sick, he came for they that are sick, those that are spiritually sick, those that are hell bound, those that do not know him, those that do not know the love of God. Many people think are living in this life, they think they know the love of God, but they don't know. They have not even begun to experience one percent of the love of God because they have not even found the real God, the true God. Those that some people are worshiping demonic idols that are putting them through through tempestuous lives, asking them of things that rigorous life that tasking them, tasking them, tasking them the, uh, to shed blood to to kill humans. So those are the gods they are worshiping. These ones have not known the real God, so they have not expressed the love of God. They don't know that it is free, that they don't have to live that reckless life to shed blood all the time. Christ shed the, 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 the blood. He shed that blood 
that was the only blood needed for the salvation of souls of the human being. That's the only blood needed. That's the only price that needed to be paid. He paid it all. But many people are out there, but they do not know. They are still paying with their own blood. They are still pay playing with their family's blood. So God said, Jesus Christ answered, when he heard them say this, he said, he came for them that are sick. Verse 13 said, but go ye and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not God to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I will have mercy, not sacrifice. I would rather have mercy on these ones. Rather than have them live a reckless, useless life and then be, you know, bringing sacrifice to me to, 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 to cover their sins. I rather have mercy on them and cleanse them now and love them and show them love and bring them to me and so that they can be heaven bound. Who is that person in your life that you look down upon? That you look at because of his reproach or her reproach. Who is that person that is rejected in the, in the, uh, in the society? Such are the people that need your love most in this period of, of celebration of love. They are the ones that you need to fish out and show love so that they can know this God. Because the Bible says God is love. God is love. These are the ones you should fish out. Let me take you again. Let me take you again to the book of 1 John chapter 4, 19 and 20. 1 John chapter 4, 19 and 20. It says, we love him. Verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. Christ first loved you. Right from your mother's womb, God loved you first. Before you even knew about God. Before you were born, he loved you first. Verse 20 says, If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. If anybody says they love God, but they hate their fellow human being, they hate their husband, they hate their wife, they hate their, uh, their brothers, they hate their sister, they hate their mother, they hate, Anybody, anyone that you can point on that you hate, that means you do not love God. If they offended you and did something so grievous to you, leave them to God to judge. The Bible says, God himself said, vengeance is mine. Leave God, he will judge them for you. He will judge them for you. They will receive that judgment and they will know that yes, they are going through that judgment. Leave judgment to God. Let God handle that. In your heart, free them. Because when you hold them in all forgiveness in your heart, you are holding yourself captive. To forgive someone is to free yourself. It's, not, it don't, it, it's, it's the better mind of you, not that person. Forgive them. Free them. Love them. Let God handle them. Let God judge them. He will judge them. That thing they did... You think they will go scot-free? God will judge them. You just love them. I continue to read verse 21. Verse 20. I, I'm reading 1 John chapter 5. So verse 20 says, If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he had seen, how can he love God, whom he had not seen? If you hate that your brother that you don't see, uh, if, you, if you hate that your brother that you can see, how can you say you now love God that you cannot see? When the one that you see, you hate. Not How will you be able to now love that, that one, that God that you don't see? If your heart is impossible to Express love to that person that you can see. I tell you, 
your heart will be hardened enough even to love God. That means you don't know God because God is love. He that knoweth God knoweth love. He that does not know God does not know love. He that does not showcase love does not have God. So you have to be able to showcase love in any way you are. Be a lady, a woman, a man of love. Express love. Don't withhold your love. God loved us freely. God loved us freely. You did not have to pay for it. Love every fellow human being freely. Leave those that did ill to you. Leave them to God for judgment. Do not ostracize. Do not reject. Do not follow them that reject people if anyone no matter how bad they may be no matter how how detested their conduct and behavior may be show them love don't follow the crowd to castigate them don't follow the crowd to pull them down don't follow the crowd to reject them that is the moment they need your love most that's the moment they need your prayers most you must be able to love them to increase and abound in love is to forgive those who have wronged you. The ability to, to, to be in love, to abound in love, is the ability to forgive. If you are, cannot forgive, then you cannot love. You cannot love. You cannot love. We come to love. Mm -hmm. Not by seeing the perfect person. We come to love not by seeing the perfect person. But by seeing the imperfect person perfectly. I will repeat that. We come to love not because we are looking at a perfect person. It's not that loving, loving is, not, is not defined because you are seeing that person and you are saying, wow, that person is so perfect. Dressing is on point. The way they talk, the way they behave, the way they do their job, the way they carry themselves, the way they, behave, the way they, are, they are. They are perfect. Oh, I love them. Mm -mm. That is not the basis of love. So when you look at someone and you are seeing perfection, that and you are saying because of that perfection, that's why you have now loved them. That is not love because love has no reason to love. Love has no basis to love. Love has no boundary. But by seeing that imperfect person that means that person that's in your eyes you are looking at that person that that person is not perfect in the way they are behaving is not perfect the way they talk is so lousy the way they behave they are so dirty looking they don't dress good they they are this they are that and you are seeing so many imperfections in them and then even with all of that you are able to showcase love to them. That means you are seeing that imperfect person perfectly. It is because of your love that that person transforms to be a perfect person. So love is able to see beyond the imperfection and sees the perfection in everyone. Love is to be able to see beyond that imperfection. And even through the imperfection, you're able to see the perfection. You are able to see the perfection perfectly. You are seeing that person perfectly because you are not judging them by the perfection that you have created in your heart. Because they didn't meet up. No. You are seeing that person. That imperfect person. You are now seeing them perfectly. When you see them perfectly. 
When you see the perfection of God in their lives, when you see them perfectly, you'll be able to and love them. It is that ability to now see that, that perfection in that person, that's the ability to love them. Because when you see that person and you see beyond that imperfection, you begin to love them, you begin to showcase love to them, you be able, begin to be able to do things for them. Because it's when you love that you can do things for people. That you can begin to act. Someone that does not love people don't act. They don't give. They don't even see that you need it. Someone that hates someone does not even see what that person he hates need. What that person need may be right in their hands. But because they hate that person, they are not able to see that he needs it. And even if they see it, they are not willing to give because they don't love. But when you see that person and you go beyond that pain they have caused you, but you can see them in love, you can even see where the lack that is seeing that person perfectly. You are seeing beyond the imperfection. And because you can see beyond, you are able to see them perfectly. And when you see perfectly, You'll be able to locate their needs. And that is when you are in a position to be able to meet that needs. If you are in that position to meet it. So let us make it all about Jesus. Let us make it, make Jesus the center of it all. Let this year's celebration of love going all around. Let it be a celebration of Jesus. Let it be, let Jesus be the center of it all and it shall be well with us in Jesus name. Amen. Have a blessed week. Have a wonderful celebration of love. Have a wonderful uh, Valentine. I wish everyone a beautiful Valentine. Those celebrating and those that are not celebrating, I love you all. I love you with the love of God. Jesus Christ is the center of it all. I celebrate love every day, every year, every month. And um, I'm always loving and loving and loving. And I love you and love you all. But I know that even Jesus loves you more. Go well and do exploits for the Lord. In this new week you are entering to, in Jesus' name. The Lord will continue to equip you, encamp around you, empower you to do exploits, to win, to gain, to increase and enlarge, to have testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. This week and so shall it be in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Love you, love you, love you. Remain blessed, remain blessed. Hallelujah. Glory. See you next week. Don't forget our Thursday, our prayer mountain, Dominion prayer line. Join us on Facebook, on our boat, uh, on the ministry channel, and on my personal line. Uh, we, got, we shall be praying 30 minutes on um, Thursday, 9.30 9 to 9.30, 9 to 9.30 um, uh, Eastern Time. And uh, you that are in um, GMT Zone and all the zones, work it out and join us. It is global. You can reach us. It's on Facebook. It's on, a, it's on, on the ministry page. It's on my personal page. This page you're looking at me from. Join us on Thursday. It will be powerful. Come with your three prayer requests. You shall go home blessed rejoicing in jesus name amen thank you all thank you father